What's going on, everybody? In this episode of World of Warships, you're watching the birth of an addict, which is not too far from the truth. One of my friends, I got interested in the game over uh, the past couple weeks, and over the weekend, he went out and bought himself a laptop just so he could play this game. So, yeah. Naturally, I felt it was only appropriate to do a video about our little rampages out on the high seas and our first couple battles together. He's only hit about Tier 3. So I'm taking out my Bogatir and my uh, Tier 2 Premium ship, the Emden, in uh, today's video. And, uh, yeah, good times. Good times all around. Right off the bat, I noticed just how much more fun it is to play with somebody, to actually coordinate and conversate with a real live human being besides, you know, typing in the chat box. I think out of all the games we played throughout the course of the night, we only lost about two or three of them. So actually playing with another real live human being makes a hell of a difference. Like, I'll, I'm sailing up this way. I usually swing up here. That way I get any spots on anything coming through here. And then this is that little gap I was telling you about, how I think they, they put a gap in the island. So I don't like going down this way because the, people might be able to shoot through that gap at me. So I'll go up here and then kind of swing down this way. That way, if anybody's coming down here, they're going to move into A and think they're capping. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, hello, and then and pop out and ambush the fuck out of them. Mm -hmm. You did not see me, did you? That's because I was hiding in the shallows. So right off the bat, the plan is we're going to go down the A and see what kind of work we can do there. I'm going to do my usual plan, as you just heard me dictate to, to uh, my friend George. I'm going to head up this away, see if I can get any spots into B, look for destroyers, and then head down the A and uh, do some supporting fire down there. George, by the way, has been playing World of Warships nonstop for the past, I think, 24 hours at the point of this recording. And you would imagine that gaming for that long would have some sort of effect on your reaction time and your ability to make smart, educated decisions. But you would be wrong. George was actually very, very competent and was doing probably better than me in, uh, in most of these games. And we're sailing down here to A with a couple ships here. It looks like we have a Carl Shrew right ahead of me that's sitting still. We got some enemies heading kind of in all sorts of different directions. Looks like they're doing the same thing I'm doing. They're just kind of keeping their eyes on B as the destroyers go up there and cap it. Now that we've secured B, we can go ahead and move on over to A. And looks like the Carl Shrew is finally getting underway. Things are about to get a little bit hairy, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it back over to the live audio. Oh, you have uh, you have torpedo bombers coming around at the bottom of the map. You see them? Yeah. Keep an eye on them. I don't know if they're gonna come look come for us or uh, or what. Close. I did nothing to that fucking guy. Hit him with a full broadside and did nothing. I just want to note here that I'm playing with the Bogatir with the upgraded gun on it, which means I have more guns, but they do a hell of a lot less damage. I'm probably going to change it back soon. Uh, swing left, you're, you're exposing yourself to a shitload of fire out there. You get that little destroyer. Unfortunately, went down pretty early into this battle, but don't worry, he'll get his moment to shine later. For now, I'm trying to deal with this Campbelltown, I'm trying to avenge my friend's death. Unfortunately, I'm in a Bogatir with the upgraded guns, and so I can't even really do that much damage even to a fucking destroyer. I hit this guy I don't know how many times and unsuccessfully take him out, at least for now. And at this point, I start to realize that I am horribly, horribly outnumbered down here. We have five enemy ships. 
all bearing down on me, so I am hightailing it the fuck out of here as fast as I possibly can. Unfortunately, I did not get the kill on that Camel Town. Somebody else finished him off. But for now, I am pulling back. There's a Miyogi that I'm passing right now, I believe. And uh, we're just gonna try to save B. Another thing worth noting is that my allied carrier, which is about a grid square or two away, does not appear to be moving. So by falling back, I'll be protecting him and hopefully be able to add my firepower to the rest of my team and protect B. Once that's done, maybe we can push back into A and retake it. I don't know. The plan's only as good as your first step, so we'll see how it goes. So, okay, a short while later, it appears that the Langley is moving, very slowly, but the Langley is moving, and B is in trouble. Looks like my teammates have pulled out, and there's an enemy battleship in there right now, as well as a destroyer, I think that is, that's moving in to back him up. There must be somebody in the cap. I can't tell from uh, looking at the preview screen here, because it doesn't look like, oh, there we go, the enemy is now capping B. So we're going to have to do some work here to prevent them from doing that. Trying to score some shots over that mountain on that battleship unsuccessfully. I'm on fire now. I have to burn my repair kit and start to exchange fire with the blue that's an Isokaz up there. Scoring a nice crit, taking out his engine. Don't know if he has a damage repair ability or not. There's a Miyogi up here now with me. I'm careful not to drive into him. Returning fire to the ships that's back there in A because I am still well within their firing range. And uh, we're going to have a big problem here in a second. That's a lot of torpedo bombers coming this way. And that Miyogi's big fat ass and my big fat Russian ass are two nice juicy targets sitting right here together. There's an I the Isokaz is now moving back up. We're going to have a fuckload of torpedoes coming our way in a second. I can already see the warning labels. It appears that I shot the Miyogi in the process of trying to save him from the destroyer. That battleship is now rounding the corner. The enemy is now triple capping us, and my Miyogi friend is about to take two torpedoes up his ass. Trying to save him from that battleship as he's bringing his guns to bear. Successfully taking him out, thank god, but oh dear. I gotta feel like a dick. I gotta feel like a dick. Yes, it would have made a difference. I used, I used him as a shield. I gotta, I gotta feel like a dick. I was I was trying so hard to. Why is gonna cost you something? Ah, let him fucking cut himself. And I do kind of feel a little bit bad about that. I mean, no matter what, that Miyogi was gonna take some hits, but I feel like if I wouldn't have cut him off, maybe uh, he would have taken a few less torpedoes there. And look at that, he's on a sliver of health. But I'm trying to avenge the damage he suffered by doing some damage to this Japanese uh, destroyer over here. Shots going out, doing some good damage. Another salvo should do it. And here we go, line. Oh, he's gonna turn. Easy shot. Kill number two, I'll take that. Thank you, sir, but oh dear, we have a problem. There is four enemy ships down here. We got a Phoenix, a Miyogi, and I believe there is two Japanese cruisers as well. I'm gonna fire some high explosive at this Phoenix. At this point, I just do not trust my armor penetrating rounds. Goodbye, sir. Let's see, who else has low health? I think that is a Tenryu, I believe, or a Kuma. One of them, I believe it's Tenryu. Gonna fire a salvo of high explosive and then switch over to armor penetrating because with this up, oh, never mind, Miyogi took his ass out. It's like self destructed. Yeah, I did not see the tracers come in from the Miyogi at first. It looked like the damn shit blew up in front of my eyes. And at this range, I stand a good chance of doing some damage here. The, the arc that the rounds take on the Bogatir is a really high arc, so they're gonna come down. Oh, on fire. Take care of that. They're gonna come down directly on the deck and maybe do some good damage here. Oh, scoring a crit, taking out one of his guns, that's always good. Line up the second salvo, see how this does. Some good hits, five hits, but only one of them managing to do damage. That's how these uh, these guns are, the upgraded guns on the Bogatir. You get more guns, but they do a lot less damage. Six hits and only one round doing damage. That's what I'm talking about there. They're not very powerful at all. I might have to switch back to the other setup. Or not! Spoke too soon! Doing a nice Citadel penetration on him there. Taking out a good bit of his health. 
Switching back over to high explosive now, and we got torpedo bombers going in on that Miyogi. I really want to finish off this Japanese cruiser, but I'm thinking I should back up my uh, Miyogi buddy and uh, take out this other, or at least do some damage on this other Miyogi over here. Set him on fire, do something. But uh, against a tier 4 battleship in, in the, with the only 105mm guns on this Boga tier, I'm not going to be able to do much. Oh dear. That kind of hurt a little bit. I gotta start thinking about, oh man, another another round coming in here from that Miyogi, taking out more of my health. I really gotta start conserving my health here. I'm trying to capture A. I'm not able to do anything to this Miyogi. My round's detonating on his ship, doing mini, minimal damage, if any damage at all. I think my Miyogi friend is gonna be on his own here. Switching back over to the Japanese ship, which has closed the distance very close. That is a Tenryu, I believe. He's going to be launching torps here soon, but he did fire a spread, so maybe... No, if he would have fired torps, they would, I would have seen them by now. But I do not know if I'm going to win this firefight. I can't remember the guns, what the caliber is on the Tenryu, but I know they're probably bigger than mine. Setting me on fire again. i got to burn my repair ability. Ooh, taking a big hit from the Miyogi. I am not going to be able to accomplish my objective down here. One more shot going into me, and I'm done. Oh, man. But, uh, that's all right. Watch this. This is the funniest damn thing I've ever seen in World of Warships. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I think he's trying to This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I've got about 600 battles under my belt right now in World of Warships, and I've never seen anything this ridiculous. But this battleship, believe it or not, he's actually in trouble. He was focusing fire on that cruiser over there, and he's got torpedoes coming in now on him. He's going to take a hit here, and there's another flight already up in the air. Big hit going in, and we're just laughing our asses off in chat right now, talking about how stalking is not cool, even if you're a carrier. But look at that, the carrier is actually gaining on him. He stands a good chance, oh, taking two more torpedoes. He stands a good chance of actually potentially getting sunk by this carrier. That carrier rams him. He's going to be in big trouble. That battleship's got to get out of here, but luckily a friendly destroyer comes along and saves him from that mean old carrier. <laughs> So let's take a look at the post-game stats, see how well I did here. Not exactly a great example of teamwork, but we'll have a good video coming up after this. Got a warrior medal, 150 random battles. I've won more than that, so that must be something new they've added to the game. 128,000 credits, 1,846 XP. That's actually not bad. I thought I did a lot worse than that. Probably one of the most funniest games I've ever played in World of Warships. Coming in third on the team, wow, the team? not bad. What the fuck? Let's look at something else. I think Lewis Williams, that thing is just, when you get every, all the upgrades to it, it's just a barrel. It's just guns, 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 guns. All right, we're going to take the Bogatiers out. Yeah. Oh, we this are, is just we are top tier, comrade. <laughs> yes, Taki, Taki, Taki Ban, is, it's been so long since I've played against them. Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. That actually, that Campbelltown you have to watch out for. He's got uh, seven kilometer torpedoes. What in a tier three? Yeah, in a tier three. Which one is that? Campbelltown, the uh, the British destroyer. Yeah. Is that a sleeper? Yes. A lot of people don't know about that thing's strength. They they, they pull it up and look at it. Uh, where did I? Oh, there we go. Well, I'll just go ahead and skip through this battle. Nothing major happens, and I'm dead before that I even know loud. it. Oh my God. This was the highlight of the evening. I'm in the premium tier 2 German cruiser, the Emden, and George is in the regular tier 2 German cruiser. I forget what it's called. But first, I'll give you a little history lesson on the Emden. The first smokestack on it isn't actually a smokestack. It's uh, it's uh, disguised as an Australian ship or something like that, or a British ship. And uh, basically, when the Germans pulled out of uh, like the Philippine area, I think, um, this ship stayed behind to just <laughs> fucking pirate the shit out of the whole area, and uh, it, it caused so much 
mischief down there that the British actually actually sent the whole fucking task force down there to hunt this thing down. Enemy force sighted on the horizon. And uh, eventually, I think it got it got caught uh, at a port. They they intercepted uh, Australian or New Zealand or whatever radio signals saying that hey, there's a ship coming to fuck you know come fuck it up. And they, they misinterpreted the radio signal. They thought it was like two days away. It turns out the ship was two hours away. So the ship just showed up and just fucked it up. And uh, yeah, that's the story of the end. So to start off this battle, we're going to do some work. There's a St. Louis on the other side of this island. Me and George are going to split up, head around both sides of the island, and catch him in a crossfire of vicious, vicious, high explosive death. The St. Louis has more guns on one side of its ship than we have combined, and we only have 105 millimeter caliber guns, and I believe the St. Louis has 120 or 130 millimeter caliber. He could shred us if he wanted to, but against both of us firing at him from two different directions, we're going to set him on fire from stem to stern and just rip this man apart. He has no back up. He's easily overextended here. And he's got no choice but to just burn and die. Hey! A kill to the, to, uh, whatever, the fleet, I guess. We're just gonna go around the perimeter of these islands here. Because the enemy's sailing away from us. This, this guy... Not wrong guy. This guy. Come on. Uh, this guy right here that I just signaled. Uh, he's going to be sailing out of cover here in a minute. Received. I'm on it. Oh wait. The yeah, uh, destroyer just popped up. So one thing you can learn from this exchange here is that uh, never take bait. This little destroyer pops up, I fixate on him. By now he's launched torpedoes, but I've anticipated that I will see them long before they even get close to me. He's trying to lure us back towards the rest of his team. I don't notice that right now because I'm fixated on trying to kill this little fucker with my high arcing rounds. Dumb, dumb idea. I do have a friendly teammate that is backing me and George up. Oh, there's those torpedoes. Detected those a little bit too late, but thankfully this ship is pretty maneuverable and I successfully dodged them. But as soon as we round the corner of this island, we are going to be within firing range of a battleship and an enemy destroyer. I don't realize that, like I said, because I'm fixated on killing this fucker and I'm not doing a too good of a job of it. But hey, live and learn, right? Nice try, motherfucker. Torpedoes, get ahead. <laughs> nope. That's why he was suckering us in. Over here. Turn it hard to the left. Yeah, the only thing we can do right now is just present broadsides and together try to drag down this Bogatier. The Bogatier does outclass us, but as we saw in the previous video, its guns really aren't anything special. And even against a lowly little Tier 2 Emden, he's going to have a hard time dealing damage to me. I am a fast and nimble target, and the firing arc on this ship doesn't really allow it for pretty good accuracy for most, uh, most players, unless you really know what you're doing and you figured out how to lead your targets uh, like an expert. Scoring a crit, setting him on fire. He's going to use his repair uh, ability immediately. And uh, he's on a sliver of health here. Tracer's coming in from somebody. Taking him out, thankfully. There is a South Carolina battleship up here. Where are you at? Follow me. Go, uh, whatever the hell. All ahead straight towards this guy. He's not even paying attention to us. He's on full health though. Oh, right, he's start. Me. He's the fuck is this little destroyer at? So okay, here's the situation. We have a full health tier three American battleship that uh, our little 105 millimeter guns are gonna have a lot of problems dealing with. And there's an enemy destroyer somewhere off to the west that is launching torpedoes at us. We are caught between two ships right now, and we really can only focus on one. So we're going to sail straight at this thing and uh, go down guns blazing. 
and just watch how many rounds this ship takes from me alone. I don't know how many rounds George lands on this thing. You can see his tracers coming in there. We're gonna, and there's more fire coming in from the rest of the fleet as pretty much almost the entire fleet is just pouring fire into this fucking thing. And just watch this. This thing takes so much punishment. I know the South Carolina gets a bad rap for not being a good battleship as, you know, compared to its big brothers, the Wyoming and the New York and the Japanese line. But this little guy takes a fucking hell of a pounding before he finally goes down. Are you firing AP or... Uh Very impressive last stand there from that South Carolina, but we still have that destroyer out here to deal with. He is somewhere, probably in that smoke screen over there. Yep, he's been spotted by somebody. Gotta hunt him down. Say Louie! So now we're down to the final moments of this game. It is five on two, about to be five on one, as this St. Louis just takes a massive hit from these two torpedoes. He's on a fraction of health here, trying to ninja this kill. Unfortunately, I'm not able to lead my target very well. I'm not too good with these high arcing rounds. It's like the, the medium range high arcing rounds from some of these ships. I just can't seem to find the right uh, the right distance. But uh, the enemy sh destroyer left, it's a Isokaz, I believe it is. I'm not too sure. Rank 3, rank 4, Japanese ship. <laughs> but we're going to hunt this little guy down. There's, what is that, five of us on one. He's going to go hide behind that island. All we got to do is just surround him or cap or something in this game. We'll be in the bag. Or so we think. <laughs> Now, last time I saw him, he was up uh, near like B8, so he's probably heading off to the corner of the map. Can I not cap? Why, why am I not able to cap the fucking flag? Oh, no, yeah. he's still over there. He's torpedoes to starboard. There he is. He's backing up. I got him. Torpedoes, direct front. Watch out for those torps. Yeah, you're good. That St. Louis is fucked. Oh, what a moron. Torpedoes, dead ahead. Okay, four on one. <laughs> you see the chat? St. Louis, be careful. Fox to do you lost. <laughs> 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 oh my god, he got fucking two of us! Shit! Alright, man, we might have to win this for the team. Dropping my speed down to half speed. God damn. We're gonna have to surround him. There he is. So right off the bat, this doesn't start off very well. His first salvo going in on me sets me on fire. I have to burn my repair party. It's going to be, I think it's like a minute and a half. Let's see. Yeah, a minute and a half before that thing refills. He pops in smoke. I know he's got torpedoes in the water, so I'm going to start maneuvering to avoid them. All the while sailing closer to try and make sure he stays within my detection range. 
But I gotta be careful. He's a rank three Japanese destroyer. His guns will hurt me, and I am on low health. And I only have those 105 millimeter guns. So yeah, I do have George backing me up, but he's on the wrong side of the island because that's where I told him to go. Second round going in on me, setting me on fire again. That is a death sentence now. Yep, I'm dead. Holy shit. Very, very well played by that Umakazi. As he took out three of us there. And he stands a good chance of winning the game now. I don't know how much health George and my teammate has. It's now two on one. He's to your left. And he's uh, in a really good position to potentially win this. If he can keep them at range, George is taking a lot of hits. If he can keep my teammates at range. Oh, he's plugging away on George. But George, however, does have the firepower to take him down. Fire an AP or HE? AT. Okay. Alright, now cut, cut it to the right. Where's that fucking chest? There you go! Boom! God damn! That was for my boy! God damn, that was a fucking fight. That was a damn good game. That was really, really fun. And it just goes to show you what two minds can accomplish working together. That Umikaze stood a really good chance of carrying the day for his team. He was picking us off one by one and uh, definitely showing that he's got some skills. Very capable destroyer captain. But uh, yeah, like I said, two minds working together, outthinking him. And in the end, there's only so much you can do against the firepower of a ship that just outclasses him. So, that was an example of some teamwork. That was my first couple games playing with another live human being, and it was a lot of fun. George has been learning a lot in the past couple days, and uh, hopefully I'll put out some more teamwork videos uh, down the line. As always, thank you guys for watching. Give the video a like if you liked it. Comment down below if you got a comment or a question for me. And like I always say, my gamer tag is Kempf. Come sail the high seas with me. Have fun doing whatever it is you're doing. Do it to the best of your ability, and I will see you when I see you. Take care. That was fucking crazy. That was great.